Hey, what is going on? We are back with another video on linear search. Today we are going to write it in Python, and this will probably be the quickest. Uh, I can't say that because Node is pretty quick, but they're pretty much going to be similar. They're going to be super quick to get up and running, uh, as linear search is a very fast algorithm to code up. As if you saw in the previous videos, you know it's just a single for loop. But without further ado, let's jump into it. I am going to do something a little different. If you have watched the C++ or the Node videos, I have made a separate function for a print statement, which I am going to remove in the Python video here. And we are going to print inside the linear search and return. We're not going to return any index or anything. But we're going to keep it nice and short. And let's jump into the code. So we're going to need two functions instead of three here. I'm going to create those now out of the way. So all I had to do was just call them. So we're going to need to read the file that I've been using of 10,000 numbers. Um, they are not unique, which I should have probably specified that. But it doesn't matter because the first number comes across, it quits, and returns it. So... Go ahead and define uh, read a file here, which is going to take a file name. And we're going to need a number array. So we're going to say numbers. And this is going to read a file. Um, I'm not a big fan of Python's is index indentation. So my code is probably going to look super compact because I don't want to mess with the indentations and it complains about spacing and uh, yeah, a little crazy. So I'm going to jump right into file, open, and then file name, and then we're going to set the mode to read for R. And there it stores everything in that file variable. And then we're going to need a for loop here. We're going to say four lines in file. We're going to say our numbers array dot append our lines here. The first, because uh, it is a string, I'm going to use integers to compare them again. So we're going to need to convert that into an integer. Uh, lines of base 10. That should take care of the for loop. And then we say file dot close. And then we just simply return back out of the function and our indentation takes care of itself. Uh, if you're wondering, I'm using IntelliJ or JetBrains IntelliJ PyCharm. And I'm using presentation mode. That's why it looks extremely big and nothing on the sides, which is nice. So I don't have to zoom in, mess with the zoom like Visual Studios. But anyway, I, dig I digress. Um, we're going to need another function here, a linear search one, which is going to take a number, the numbers array, and then I need a target. So I'm going to use a conventional for loop here. I'm not going to use the for x and y because I want the index. So for i in range of length of numbers. We simply say if numbers equals target, if I can spell correctly here, I don't need uh, parentheses, use the C syntax and everything else. Numbers equals target, then we say, oh, I'm missing something here, jump the gun. We need the index i, and then here's where we're going to add our print statement here. We're going to say target is found, was found at index i. Because if we use for line for x and y, we wouldn't be able to get the index. We would have just been able to print target was found, and there would have been no index. But the purpose is to find the index of said target and return it and do whatever you want to do with it. This is where we return out, and we're done. And jump down outside of the for loop here. We just say if nothing is found, then we just say 
target was not found. And that's it. Super short and simple. The old the kiss saying, keep it simple, stupid. Nope, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's jump into our file. I got the path already copied because seen from the previous ones, it's fairly long. Oops, um, put the gun on the quotes there. There is my ten thousand numbers that text file. Need our empty array, and then we can just go read a file and then we can pass in a file and then we can pass in numbers and then we can say we don't even need to return anything linear search because now the print is taken care of inside linear search function which is not what you want in the real world you kind of want to decouple it but for the purpose of this it does not matter because it's, it's like four lines whoop de doo so we need a number here, and then a number that I know is in the file. That's on that. And then for uh, edge case purpose, we'll do numbers and a number outside of the range of the file. Nope. No, no semicolons on the end. This is not. No. Semicolons do not belong in Python at the end of a statement. So I don't know how this is going to run inside of. Oh, see, no, no new line at the end of file. Um, anyway, I don't know how this is going to run in presentation mode, but let's try it. Oh, there we go. 3,630 was found at index 4,437. 11,000 was not found. That is everything to the linear search written in Python. Um, if you have not watched the previous videos and you're wondering why I did not do everything within this function here to read in the lines and just take this and compare it to that because Again, I want to keep the decoupling here. Um, gives you, if you want to copy the code and run with it and make this your own thing, it gives you the option to transform the data when you read it in. That way you can change it, you can modify it, you can delete it, you can add to it, whatever you want to do with it, this gives you this read function gives you the option to do that because we just append everything to this numbers array which if it gets to millions of millions of lines then you start to run into an issue of uh, how do you want to go about storing that because that will bog down the computer and can take up to 15 minutes or so to run you can't come up with an efficient solution to read that file but for this purpose 10,000 numbers don't do anything to the computer it runs in milliseconds if not faster so yeah that is all to linear search in Python I hope you liked the video hope you found some use to it I hope to see you guys on the next one we got Java left to do so be fun. And as always, thank you for tuning in, watching the video.